Today on Community Cooking, we have guest chef Suzanne Alexander from Lisa's Bon Appetit and Lisa's Cafe and Bakery making her famous chicken pot pie soup. Plus an apple ginger trifle for dessert. You won't want to miss this. We're cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community. So grab a seat and relax. We have another great meal coming at you. This is your Community Cooking. And welcome to Community Cooking. I'm your host, Maria Prekicis, and I am very excited to have our guest chef, Suzanne Alexander, with us. So happy to have you back. Thank you. Love to be here. Well, it's always so much fun when you're here, and the food, let me just tell you, I know it's fantastic. Today, we're making one of your specialties from the restaurant and cafe. We are. We are making our chicken pot pie soup. Very popular. Okay, so chicken pot pie when I was little, I didn't have the patience to wait for the oven to heat up and the actual store-bought frozen pie, but it was still my favorite thing. So this is a fun twist you put on it. It is. It is. Um, it's basically pretty much the same thing, but it's a little, you know, a little more broth, and then we crumble the pie on top, oh. the pie crust on top. And then you eat it, and it's delicious. I can't wait. People and, love it. And then we're also going to make a dessert in a little bit. We are. Ginger apple trifle. Anytime you say trifle, I'm in. I'm in. So let's start with the chicken pot pie soup. Let's go over the ingredients. Okay. Well, we have our chicken, the um, star ingredient. <laughs> and then we um, are going to I'll just show you how we make the stock. And okay. then I do have stock. Um, set aside so that we can get going because the stock does take a while. Okay. Um, so in the stock is um, onions, carrots, celery, garlic, salt, pepper, um, bay leaves, little parsley. I love it. So. And the chicken you roast yourself. Um, that is actually raw. That is raw. Pardon yes. me. That's so that is meant. raw. This that, <laughs> that is going to be used in the stock. Yeah. Okay. So you get the bones in there and it you know cooks down for probably about six hours okay so we're and talking from scratch that's from scratch yeah <laughs> so we're not going to be here that long no but that's so right. I have some already made okay but you'd have yeah. seasoned it, it I looks did like. season it yeah. yes yeah okay so what do we do for the stock to prepare it so what we're gonna do is and you and it's actually really easy is we're just gonna take those are good uh, farmer's market carrots, too. That's they a carrot. Are. They are. I went to the farmer's market yesterday, even in um, the rain. <laughs> and uh, so basically, here you have it. You just I love put it. it in there, whole, oh, like that. And that's the easy thing about stock is you don't have right. to chop. You don't. You just need all those flavors. You're just going to put the chicken in. Look at that. Goodbye, oh, like the that. star of the Boom. show. And I love it. And then the onion, we will just quarter and put in there. See, that's even better because there's no crying if you just yeah, have to I'm, quarter it. Exactly. There's no crying which, with quartering. Which I have a problem with. I'm tearing up and it's crazy. So I um, I do like that we're not chopping this yeah. a well, lot. Just one, two. Stock's easy because it's all fresh. You don't have to worry. You put everything in. And we're going to put in some garlic cloves. Hold, well, see. No chopping. And that also why it's so healthy because when you cook it for a long time and then you've got all these um, you know great ingredients mm -hmm. um, it's that's why they call it what the Jewish or mother's uh, you know medicine for yes. when you're sick oh yes because it has all those great ingredients in there so a little bit of salt so super easy a and you control pepper. the sodium you control everything exactly in it. so I mean if you don't want to put any you, you don't have yeah. to do that so as as little or as you know seasoned as you would like. Look at it now. And that's so a... we're just going to do that, and then you just I'm going to cover it. We'll I'm going to fake the water. We'll put so a little we water, the water in, in there. It, cover it. And... Cover it up. And now, since we have the chicken in here, after two hours, I took the chicken out. Okay. Well, and look at this. And I took. So this is all the chicken. Yeah. So dark meat, light meat, everything. Um, and then we have that to the side. And if you can see, there's like, it's a little gelatin. Yeah. 
That's because it's been cooking for a while and the um, bone marrow is coming out and it's, you know, thickening, thickening the, mm -hmm. um, the stock up okay. with that gelatin. So the longer you cook it, the more gelatin you'll get and actually the more healthy it is. Oh, really? The yeah. more gelatin, the better. So, mm -hmm. Okay. So you take the chicken out after a couple hours and then you still let that sit right. on the stove. And okay. then you put back all the bones and the cartilage and all that kind of stuff. You just yep. put that back in there. Maybe put a little bit more water if you need to. Okay. And then just let it sit, simmer on low for, you know, another four to six yep. hours. You can also do it in a crock pot. See, I've so a crock pot. I've can, never used it. So this will be my chance to so, use yeah. it. So you can absolutely, like in the morning, stick it in there, yep. boom, when you come home. So you've been gone for like eight yep. or so hours. Um, and then you come mm -hmm. home and you can just, you've got some great stock. Oh, I love it. Yeah. All right. So the stock, you brought some already done because yes. we do not, as you said, have six hours. The chicken Correct. is cut up. The bones and such are still in the pot. And we have this beautiful stock. All so right. So here's our stock. So obviously she's taken everything out, you know, the big chunks of <laughs> right. So this of everything. This I've actually strained. Yeah, um, it does have like a little bit of the chicken pieces. Mm -hmm. With everything, um, everybody's so concerned about you know your health and and you know what is in your food. Mm -hmm. This is where you have control over it. Yep, definite control over what what you're putting in your body, and um, I love so that. It's so yummy. And so and for the soup. Obviously, really easy. You can oh. see that was so easy to do. I like the and crock pot because it's controlled. You don't have to worry. You just throw it in and exactly. leave it. Exactly. Exactly. So okay. that's great. In the meantime, I'm just going to take um, a little bit of butter okay. in here. And we're going to make just a little bit of roux because that's what's going to thicken this. Okay. So roux is just butter and flour, equal parts, cooking it down. You want to cook it down a little bit so that you cook out all the. Um, yeah, the not cook out the flour, but you're gonna make it, it so it out. smooths out and it doesn't have like a real pasty okay. taste. So it does take a little bit of um, time, but we're gonna do that. I have and made roux before. Are roux good too for the start of gravy? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's that's um that's the basics for that. So I'm just going to stir it up a little bit, and then what we'll do now is we'll take. The vegetables that are going to go into oh okay our uh, our soup and so not the be... big ones now we're going no, smaller now, for now the we're soup gonna, I exactly. cut up some carrots yes please slice and die okay this is a knife this is your chef knife yeah we love I it. like I like that knife and I and I do like this one oh and it's sharp I'll do it properly <laughs> and I'm just cutting them little rounds bite size still. I love carrots. I love all veggies. I, I was the weird too. kid that I was like, give me more vegetables. That is kind of. Of course, my grandmother that was. That is unusual. She was from kid. Greece. And we always laughed. She'd go, pull over. And we'd be in a vacant lot. And she'd pick up some greens and we'd eat them for dinner. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, no, it was very cool. Okay, so I'm going to reach so just, over yeah. with my carrots. I'm just going to cut mine just a little bit smaller. I was going to say. Because we, our timing here is is a little right. different so than, uh, in than working in the kitchen. Okay. Yeah, that's true. There we go. At work. So they have a little bit more time. <laughs> well, so. it's great to you. We, the recipes are available. If you miss something, don't worry. So. Oh. Fresh veggies. And I see we have peas as well. We do. Now, uh, those, fresh, frozen, does it matter? I actually, like things those easy. are frozen um, by all means when, you know, peas are in season. Yep. I, I would definitely use fresh peas. That okay. They always taste so much better. And so we've got this. And then mm. so I'm also going to put a little bit of white pepper. Now, white people pepper? love white pepper. Because you know what? It has like a little Oops. more flavor than black pepper. Isn't that funny? Um, but I know a lot of chefs yeah. love white pepper. And plus also, if you don't want, um, you know, the black flecks in your sauce, yeah. then, you use, then you use the white pepper and you 
like definitely. And then this is a little poultry seasoning. Oh, I was so going to say, gonna, what's the green stuff? Okay. So we're going to put a little poultry seasoning in there. And I'm going to put a little garlic. Why wouldn't and, we? And I'm stirring up my roux here. It's coming together. Yep. Okay. So. And that's some garlic. Oh, garlic. look at that. And this is definitely, I mean, it's mince, mince fine. Yeah, so we buy big tubs yeah. of garlic and we whirl it up in a little olive oil oh. and we have it ready to go because we go through lots. A lot. Like probably a gallon a day. Oh, my word. Yeah. Healthy kitchen. Yeah. Healthy so, restaurant. I love the smell of garlic. So a lot of garlic. All right. And your roux is, the you heat is on. I think I'm going to move it to this one that's a little bit bigger so we and maybe really a little bit hotter. And I'll turn go. that one off. And so the roux, we want it on semi-low heat or I know we have it cooking yeah, now. We don't, yeah, we don't want it too high because we don't want to burn it. Okay. Um, it is, you know, butter and flour. And again, I did use the um, clarified, clarified butter. Clarified butter so it doesn't burn. And explain um, to folks again how to make clarified butter. Um, the clarified butter is, you'll take your pound of butter, you're going to melt it. And so you melt it on low for quite a while and then you'll see the milk solids cut like separate yeah. and so what you want to do is you want to take those milk solids out so you um, you know almost like when you're like basting when you do the basting mm -hmm. chicken yeah and you're taking the fat off of it well you're doing the same thing with the milk solids and and we do use only butter I have never liked margarine ever oh yeah so we use um, pure olive oil for cooking because okay. um, using extra virgin olive oil is really a waste if you're gonna heat it okay um, good to know because once you heat the olive oil the good properties are gone it's it's now becoming rancid oh okay immediately when that. yeah yeah when you put it to heat so there's no point in spending, you know, an exorbitant amount of money on extra virgin olive oil if you're going to heat it. Good to know. If you're putting it, it in salad oil, that's different a different thing. story. Okay. If you're not going to heat it, if you're going to put it in cold products, then by all means, that's the best. Yeah. That's what I you want. I did not know that. So you want two in your kitchen? So, well, we do. Well, yeah. And I would uh, you know, I, I don't know, cooking. like, how often... You know, but some people, whether it's actually worth it. For us, it's definitely, definitely worth, worth it because it. we go through, again, gallons of it. So the stock is almost boiling, but we don't actually have to wait for it. There's another way to thicken it. We can. So the roux is warm here, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour the half and half in here. And as you can hear, it's, it's warm. And so this will thicken, and then I'll pour that into the... Okay, so we could either wait for it to boil the stock and then add the roux and then add the right. cream or, or add the cream to the roux. Yep. Beautiful. And so as it heats up, it will thicken and then we'll just put it into the stock. And then it the, thickens up. And then the do veggies. we add the peas at the end? We will. Okay. Because those will, those heat up so fast. Yeah. And you don't want to get them, we don't want mushy peas. No mushy peas no here. Mushy peas. And then the chicken, do we leave it kind of... Um, all torn apart do we cut it up more so you can do that that's definitely your preference you can okay. just tear it apart or you can you know put it on the cutting board cut it up in chunks and put it in I want to um, know however you guys make it at the restaurant well because we use so much of it yeah we um, a lot of times have the cooked chicken separate and so we just chop it up yeah and put it in it so it, it will be in chunks when you get it at and the cafe. Who mm -hmm. came up with this recipe? I know it's one of the favorites at the restaurant at the cafe. Um, it is actually a um, chef that has moved now to Nebraska. Oh, we, we miss, miss him, him so, Jim. And um, he was he was the soup guy, and uh, he made the best soups. Oh, I love it. And um, we do make all of our soups fresh, so um, no canned, no bagged, no yeah. nothing like that. So they are all from scratch. And, um, but this was his baby and he, he, um, what, invented it or, yeah. you know, maybe he had it somewhere else and said, you know what, I can do that. But the good news is so, he left you the recipe. Yes. That's the most important part. Love that gym. So, well, I like it all shredded up, like you said, when you add it. Yeah. I like the chicken so, all shredded. So we can definitely do that. Okay. And we can actually put that in now. So, uh -huh. um, 
you like it shredded, and that's I what we'll like do. We'll shredded. just shred it up in here. I didn't mean for and, you to get your hands dirty. And it actually shit. will, um, you know, fall apart anyways yeah. as it's cooking. So I don't have to do a lot of that because it'll just do it all by itself. We like those kind of recipes. I know. Do it all by themselves. So there you go. And so we wait for that to thicken, add the peas, and that's our soup except for the topping. Yeah, which that is the um, pie and pie dough. And so you can make it yourself if you have a great pie dough recipe. Or you can, um, oops. Or, or you can, buy, you one can from the store. buy one from the store and cook it and just crumble it up. Yeah. Which is what, what I've done. Okay. Just for ease sake. So. Well, look at that. Here it is. I could just eat the pie crust. You do know that. I do love pie crust too. So, and do you want to wait delicious. till right before you serve it to crumble it up? I do. Okay. So we're gonna wait for that while this is thickening up. How's it looking? A few more minutes. Well, a few more minutes. All right. This is a great time for a break. When we come back, we'll finish up our soup and then go on to dessert: the mm. apple ginger trifle. trifle. Oh, say no more. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Every year, 40% of all food in the U.S. never gets eaten. 40%. That's almost half the food we produce. Food waste is a serious problem. It impacts all of us. And it's expensive. Your family is throwing $1,500 a year in the trash. Here at Chop Junior, we're working hard to put food waste on the chopping block. And you can do the same at home. Learn how to cook it, store it, and share it. Just don't waste it. Go to savethefood.com. Welcome back to Community Cooking. Our chicken pot pie soup is simmering away. It smells so good. It is so definitely, good. definitely boiling now. We added the so cream and the roux now. and the peas, and we're just going to let it simmer a little. Ooh. So now, while that's simmering and my taste buds are salivating, onto the apple ginger trifle. You say trifle, I say yes. Good. What do we I, start with? I'm so with? happy to hear that. <laughs> so actually, I started this ahead of time, and okay. this was the apples. So we're making our apple sauce okay. um, ahead of time. Now, I, again, went to the farmer's market, and um, I asked the woman who has all the apple cider, the apple, apple, apple butter, yes. apples, apples. Um, like, what apples does she like? And she loves these Tehachapi apples. Which I've so never heard of, Tehachapi. I have never heard of those either. The Tehachapi like apple. actually is a little north of here. Um, she said it's sweet and mm. good. Yeah. So, so you chop these up and put them on the stove. So I chopped them up, put them in the stove, a little bit of lemon juice, a little okay. bit of sugar. And again, this is where you yourself can monitor, you know, what you put in there, whether it be sugar or agave or okay. you can do honey, whatever. Um, lemon juice. And um, and I put a little cinnamon. Okay. So And that you covered it and just let it cook down. I, I did. And so... I noticed, because I used Tehachapi and um, Granny Smith, that the Granny Smith ones will mash up a little bit, but, but the Tehachapis are a little firmer. It'll still be soft. They're really good, though. But they are definitely firmer, and, and she mm. liked them, so I thought, you know, I'll just try something different yeah. and see what she likes. So also what goes in this. Okay. So trifle normally has, like, a pound cake. You drizzle sherry over yeah. it. It's the fruit and the custard and then it's layered again so we're just doing like a little different version of that okay um so i'm taking ginger snaps Which and i love must sample everything before it goes on let's do that it has to be okay for you mm. is that good those are yummy ginger snaps okay i'll taste the other half and i'll take some of that brandy <laughs> so instead of sherry we'll use a little brandy okay and this is apple jack, so I thought, huh, apples. What? So we put a, just a little, little bit. Now, notice what she's doing, everyone. She's just putting some drops on. If you want it in a drink, it goes separate. Yeah, plus, I mean, the more of this you put, the mushier okay. the ginger snaps get. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't want them to be completely, like, mush. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got that there. And um, so custard... Uh, I have some custard already made, yeah. but if you want to make your own custard, show me how. We take the eggs, 
and which I also got at the farmer's market. I was market. like, you can tell those are good eggs. They look <clears throat> great, don't they? Yeah. Oh, oops. I'm so glad I'm not the only one that does that. Well, maybe you could get me another egg in there. <laughs> we, we have another egg in we the fridge. We have another egg in the fridge. All right, tell me about your restaurant while you're waiting for me and the egg. So um, we do this actually um, at the restaurant, and um, trifle is kind of a big seller during the holidays. Um, it's but you very can make it English, any time of year. But we do, and so in I the springtime we make a lemon berry lemon curd berry trifle. Oh, yum. So instead of custard, we use lemon curd. And this is also I'm about how, to eat this how whole you thing make custard, lemon curd. Oh, well, okay. I was going to say, but continue to show us. So, so yeah, so lemon curd is made the same way, but basically with lemon juice instead of your okay. milk or cream. So I... You take a spoon? You know what? So I'm going to guess. Okay. Because you're a chef and you can It's about that. a third of a cup. Okay. So I'm going to say it's like that. And so we're going to put it over sugar, a double boiler. A double boiler. And so if you don't have a double boiler, you can um, you can use a bowl okay. and put it in. Oh, okay. I didn't um, realize that. A Easy. pot. So if you have like a metal bowl or a glass bowl, that's not going to crack or break. All right. Um, again, I'm not, not sure exactly like how you would figure whether it's going to break or not glass, boiler. but <laughs> make it easy. A metal bowl will yeah. probably, you know, definitely be your ticket there. Okay. So you're, and you want to make sure it's not too hot because then you'll have scrambled egg. Yeah. And we don't want that. Okay. And no, that's, that's no, that's good. the key. And that's why I use a double boiler and not just put it on the stove exactly. directly. So, and it's also something where you look at it and you say, oh God, I don't know. It's, it doesn't look it's like it's, <laughs> it looks like it's going to take forever. Yeah, and then it doesn't. And then boom, okay. it's done. So and you it's just not heavy anything. Cream? I did. Okay. So, well, actually, this is half and half. Half and half. You can use milk, half and half, but you'll do you know stir this around, and like I said, it looks like for the longest time nothing's happening, and then it's it a matter turn of turn into this. No time. <laughs> I love it. And, and about how much time does it take usually? It'll probably take about 15 minutes. Okay. So, but it's really easy. Yeah, and no, that's simple. I forgot the vanilla, so we usually put vanilla yeah, in there. Yeah, it's all right. Um, but I did. Uh, you remember it did in this forget. one? Because I've already I did tasted it. Yeah, I did remember it. I in that took one. a little scoop to make sure that this was what it was. I just, you know. Okay, well, that's very. So good. we crumble the cookies. So we, we put the, the cookies, brandy. So I'm just going to set this aside because okay. we do have that, and we, do we have are. It. Um, oh, in everything a smells time so crunch. good. Those apples. And again. I it's tell this you. one up here, correct? Can so, yeah. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to let you create. So, what we do All right, I'm gonna take this is out first, of the way. we're going to take the apple. So, we have the cookies, the brandy, a little bit of apple. A little bit of apple. And by the way, I love that you do them in the wine glasses. Yeah. So, I mean, we do have little individual trifle bowls, but most people probably don't have trifle. Yeah. yeah. No, and so this is fun. I have wine these. glasses or <laughs> wine glasses. and so a little custard. And then what you can do is you can crumble a little oh. bit. So it's so two layers. So you do that. I can crumble cookies. That's pretty easy. Well, not a ton, but enough to get you some texture. Yeah. So if it's like two more. or three, that's okay. good. I'm going to just do a little yeah, bit more. Well, please do. It. Like that. And then. Oh, we're more gonna, brandy, please. We're going to do it again. Why not? So we've got the brandy, and we're going to just sprinkle it a little bit. There, that's a little more covered. A little bit more. Ooh. This I love time. layering. And there's no good or bad way to layer it. You just layer it. Right. <clears throat> I like easy. So, and, and that's, yeah, that's what makes this Some super apples. easy. And then we have. A little more apple. We're gonna do this again. Am I crumbling more? Cause I'm starting no. to crumble. Oh, oops! No. That's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> we are we are done with the crumble, okay. unless you know, unless we do those two. But um, I think we'll just do this. Oh, and then a little custard. We've got the custard again. Oh my gosh! And it looks so pretty. My so. friends will be so impressed, and it's so easy. So I got that a little bit. I remember sometimes my mother would make these huge trifles. I like the individuals. 
Right. So the but huge trifles, that's when we um, kind of do a little more decoration on yeah. the sides. So but we'll cut the strawberries and kiwis and we put it up against the bowl. Oh, yeah, so it yeah. Looks so it looks really pretty and it's very colorful and it has the red and the green for yep. Christmas. And um, I have a little whipped cream. In oh, the, I'll um, grab it. Yeah. And can you and add maybe stir. even more fruit if you want? If you do, uh huh. Okay. Sure. If you wanted to put blueberries in here or whatever, you know, whatever I mean the apples are delicious. So, and, and this so, is whipped cream, but there's little brown speckles in it. I did put a little bit of cinnamon, cinnamon? in here Excellent. and a little tiny bit of powdered sugar. Ooh, yeah. Um, and then just a dollop. I thought this was it, and now you're giving me more goodness. More goodness. Why wouldn't you? And so oh. a little dollop there. And so you can either put like a little apple wedge on top if you wanted to, oh, yeah. or you could, you know, cut this in half. Oh, and then beautiful. Just, oh, there we go. It's too beautiful to eat, but guess what? You're going to eat I'm it. I'm going to try it in a moment. Okay. We're going to clean things up, uh, dish out my chicken pot pie soup, put the crumbles on and taste everything when we get back. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more Community Cooking. Welcome back to Community Cooking. All right, Susanna, I always love it when you come here. Because look, we have our chicken pot pie soup with crumbled pie crust on top. Oh, yeah. Who needs? I mean, I can't wait. It smells so good. Thank I got to get it. Oh. Mm. Okay, the flavors. It's The garlic is not overpowering, but you can taste it. It just. Mm. You can tell that stock. And it definitely is good when it's cold. And oh. not feeling good either. Oh my word. Okay. This mm. is a make at home. Now for dessert. My apple ginger. I have to get a little bit of everything. Trifle. This is the first wine glass that I'm glad there's something besides wine in. Really? Oh my word. The well maybe I should try a little bit. Oh yeah. All the hints of all the different flavors you put and the apples. <gasps> and fresh apples. So that's the best. Definitely much better than your applesauce that you get from a can. Oh, so and the custard, and then just a hint of cinnamon and the whipped cream. And the brandy. Well, I was going to mention that, but I already mentioned wine. So, mmm. And honestly, you don't have to put the brandy in there. Yeah. I mean, but some people don't drink or don't like it. But, but <gasps> for the um, for the adult and the sophisticated palate, bonjour. Oh, right? cheer, cheers to that. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming in. I love it when you're here. It's Thank so you. delicious. And I mean, pie crust on your chicken pot pie soup? Why wouldn't yeah. you? Uh, Thank you. I really hope you all make these recipes at home because they are, in one word, delicious. On behalf of Suzanne, myself, and the entire crew, thanks for watching. And remember, we really do have some of the best chefs right here in our own community. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time on Community Cooking. <laughs>